the Court of Appeal has ruled that it will allow fresh evidence in the case of murder convicts Vibes Cartel, Sean Storm, Kaira Jones, and Andre St. John. The hearing of arguments, which will last for five days, will begin next Monday, and defense attorney Bert Samuel says victory is on the horizon. First and foremost, free the world, boss. I'm your gracious host, Caspian Montgomery. Today, we'll be doing something a little bit out of the normal. I'm going to be explaining Vibes Cartel's appeal day one through five with help from Damien Mitchell and the Jamaican Gleaner. Gaza Nation, I hope you do enjoy this piece. I know it is a bit different from what I usually do, but I believe that it is needed. Appellants, please begin. Day one of the Vibes Cartel appeal hearing got underway in Kingston this morning with a claim by one of the lawyers for the dancehall artist and his co-accused Sean Storm. According to Bianca Samuels, the metadata of the text message prosecutors used to convict her clients shows that the text was actually created on July 6, 2011, that's six weeks before the August murder of Clive Lizard Williams. This is what the text message found on Cartel's phone had said. Between me and you, we'll chop up the boy Lizard fine fine and dash him away now. As long as we're alive, them can never find him. This one has left me puzzled, Samuels told the appeal court. To that, the president of the Court of Appeal, Dennis Morrison, responded, Our silence was sharing in your puzzlement. So on the first day of the appeal, attorney Bianca Samuels presented evidence that showed that the, the, the text that was saying that he was going to the chop up a uh, lizard fine fine was actually created six weeks before the alleged murder occurred. Um, there was no other evidence presented saying uh, we will murder him or anything. So this is basically saying that he already, a month and a half before, was planning on disposing a body that he has not even yet killed, but didn't decide to talk about any plans of killing him. Uh, then Bianca Samuels says that this leaves her puzzled and the judge responded by saying our silence is, sh is showing that we are also puzzled and I frankly am just flabbergasted. I, I can't believe this was presented as, as, as evidence Free world boss. I'm Damian Mitchell with the roundup on day two of the Vibes Cartel Appeal hearing. Well, it began this morning with Bert Samuels, the lead attorney for co-convict Sean Seanstorm Campbell, asking the jurists not to order a retrial for the August 2011 murder of Clive Lizard Williams. According to Mr. Samuels, the case is rife with incurable deficiencies. And he said a retrial would allow the prosecution to fix those deficiencies. Later, Cartel's lead attorney, Valerie Nita Robertson, told the court that four years ago, on March 13, 2014, it was too late when the trial judge, Lennox Campbell, sent the jurors to consider a verdict against Cartel and Sean Storm, as well as their co-convicts, Kyra Jones and Andre St. John. The 11-member jury was directed to start deliberations at 3.42 p.m. The jurors returned to the courtroom at 5.35 p.m., but at 5.46, they were sent back to the jury room to consider their deliberations. At 6.02 p.m., they returned with a 10-1 majority verdict. Mrs. Nita Robertson says it was a miscarriage of justice for the jury to have retired after 3 o'clock. According to her, the judge acted with undue haste and went against the benchmark that has been adopted by the Jamaican courts. The attorney said it was open to Campbell to have the jury consider the verdict the following day. On day two of the appeal, uh, attorney Bert Samuels then comes in and he, he urges the judges to not have a retrial because if they, a retrial would happen, which I, I don't see it happening, the prosecutors would then have time to tamper with more evidence and create another story to wrongfully convict Vibes Cartel and the co-accused and then later that day in court, uh, Valerie, attorney Valerie Robinson said that 
in the previous trials, um, basically what she was saying was they rushed the outcome. They shouldn't have been in court uh, past three o'clock, I believe. And basically what she was saying was they should have gave it another day and then they could deliberate and come up with, with what they thought at a, uh, at a, with a whole day ahead of them. Instead, they were rushed, felt like they were pressured. And I might add that it wasn't a unanimous decision. It was 10-1. So there was one person that was not convinced even back then with the lack of all this new evidence Free work, boss. Attorney at law Valerie Nita Robertson today tried to convince the appeal court that convicted Danzel Artis to Vibes Cartel was not at the Havendale St. Andrew House in August 2011 when Clive Lizard Williams was killed. On day three of the appeal hearing, Nita Robertson said at 7.48 p.m. on the day Williams was killed, Cartel was at the Andrews Memorial Hospital in St. Andrew. This challenges the truth of cell tower information produced by police experts. Nita Robertson told the appeal court that the evidence that Cartel was at Andrews at 7.48 p.m. would mean he could not be at the Havendale house when Williams was killed. Inspector Warren Williams, who heads the Police Cybercrimes Division, had testified at the 2014 trial that cell tower information showed that Cartel's mobile phone was operating in Havendale at 7.52 p.m. On day three of the appeal, attorney Nita Robinson drops a bombshell when she presents evidence that Vibes Cartel, Adija Palmer, was bitten earlier that day by his, his own pit bull and had to be taken to St. Andrew Hospital. And he arrived at St. Andrew at 7.48. In the previous trial, uh, they, they claimed, the police claimed that they had cell site evidence that proved that he was in Havendale at 7.52. Now, if he arrived in St. Andrew at the hospital at 7.48 and there's proof of this, then there is absolutely no reason why World boss and the other three innocent men aren't coming home. Free world boss. On day four of the Vibes Cartel Appeal hearing, one attorney today said in 2014, the summation to the jury by trial judge Lennox Campbell was defective in form and substance. Oswest Senior Smith, the attorney for co-convict Andre St. John, was making his submissions before the appeal court. According to Senior Smith, in summing up the case for the jurors, Justice Campbell failed to adequately and fairly deal with the evidence put forward by the four men. For example, he said during the trial there was no evidence that on the night Lizard was killed, St. John had a firearm or anything that could be conceived as a threat. So from the outset, a distinction ought to have been made about the alleged involvement of each accused in the summation, he said. On day four of the appeal, attorney Senior Smith um, basically tells the appeal court that the judge that handled the previous 2014 conviction, basically, instead of, 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 of telling um, Vibes Cartel testified and, and said that the blood of Lizard Williams is not on his hands, did not kill him. And the judge failed to present that to the jury and instead presented um, the statement that, that they believe that there was people, the court system was against them trying to bring them down because uh, of his entertainer's persona, which is, which is not real life. Um, I can tell you that when you are an entertainer or a musician, um, that is not your real life you are you're writing what you feel what you love but this doesn't reflect how you are as a human you cannot do that in any form of art truly reflect how you are as a human so um he was just basically saying that that the way that the judge presented him he presented him as the entertainer the, the person who likes violent songs but they never 
present any of his positive songs, which he has some of the most positive songs in the entire world. But of course they wouldn't present that. And on, and, and on the next day, this is Friday, uh, day five of the appeal coming up, this is when the prosecutors have their chance to rebuttal. Now watch what they say is it's quite amazing. Well, on day five of the Vibes Cartel appeal hearing, prosecutors took center stage today. Assistant Director of Public Prosecutions, Aret Brown, opened these submissions, saying the trial judge did nothing wrong when he admitted certain digital evidence. Over the past four days, the appellants, through their attorneys, have sought to convince the appeal court that during the 2014 trial for the murder of Clive Lizard Williams, Justice Lennox Campbell admitted contaminated evidence. But this morning, Assistant DPP Art Brown sought to reject their assertions. There was no evidence that the BB messages, videos, and text messages taken from Cartel's mobile phone were tampered with, and even if they were, that was an issue for the jury to decide, he said. Brown also said where there were gaps in the continuity of the text messages, they would not bar admissibility. What they affect is the weight or cogency attached to the evidence, Brown asserted, insisting that the judge was not palpably wrong to admit to the exhibits. Then he turned to the issue over the damning text messages that Clive Lizard Williams chop up fine fine. According to Brown, there was a mistaken belief about the text. The appellants have raised concern that the damning text was created six weeks before Lizard was murdered. But the assistant DPP says that was a misapprehension. He told the appeal court that the file or folder for the message was created on July 6, 2011, but the actual text message was created on August 19, that three days after Lizard was killed. And the prosecutor today told the appeal court that he cannot explain how three telephone calls were made from the mobile phone of Vibes Cartel nine days after it was handed over to police investigators. The three calls were made on October 9, 2011. The phones were handed over to the police on September 30, 2011. I will not attempt to advance an explanation, said Brown. During the trial, a police investigator testified that the phone dialed itself as he tried to account for the calls while the police had the phone. This morning, there was laughter in the courtroom after Brown repeated this explanation. On day five of the appeal, the prosecutors, I, I couldn't even believe that he had the, the gall to say this. He said, even if evidence was tampered with, and was submitted by Judge Lennox Campbell. It was up to the jury to decide, and I thought it was um, rather idiotic for him to say. Um, and then my favorite part of the uh, prosecution's strong case uh, against this is, is that there were three cell phone calls made. Wow, Adesia Palmer's cell phone was in police custody you must acquit if the glove does not fit this is serious business even if i tried to make a joke and that right there the whole case should be thrown out now gaza nation i i i know what you heard what just what we've all just heard is that this might take up until december for the appeal court to decide. But I want us all to keep in good spirits and what I would like us to go on, on Vibes Cartel's Instagram page and just give him well wishes, um, tell him to hold his head up, stay strong. Uh, it, it is looking very good for justice for once and all four men should be home by Christmas. And it will be the greatest Christmas uh, the world has ever known. But these men are innocent. And I believe the first five days of this appeal uh, proves that. Uh, tell me in the comments, you agree or disagree. Until next time, Gaza be said forever. Society, let me out my fire, you would me one go. Me wango. Me wango.